Well, here's Lesson 6, Part B, Section 6.3, Trigonometric Functions of Real Numbers. So the formula for negatives, and there's a little bit of magic going on here. Find the exact value of cosine of 45 degrees and cosine of negative 45 degrees. And the reason I say there's a little magic going on here is this is kind of amazing. Now, I don't know how amazing it is, but it's, it's unique. Well, you'll notice that the cosine of 45 degrees and the cosine of negative 45 degrees are exactly the same. There is no difference between them. And that leads us to a theorem, because we just love theorems in mathematics. That the cosine of negative theta is equal to the cosine of theta. And you can try this with a lot of different angles. You can do cosine of 100 and the cosine of negative 100. I don't care if it's in radians or degrees. And you'll always get the exact same value. Let's see if it works for sine and tangent. So find the exact value of sine of 45 degrees and the exact value of sine of negative 45 degrees. And you will notice that it doesn't work. Well, I would say it doesn't work, but it's not the same. You notice that the sine of 45 degrees is 0 0.7071, and the sine of negative 45 degrees is negative 0 0.7071. And that leads us to a rule. Now, this makes sense to me. The sine of negative theta is negative sine theta. That, that negative gets factored out. Didn't happen with cosine. With cosine, the cosine of negative theta was equal to cosine theta. That negative just disappeared. And we don't see that very often in math. And it only happens for cosine. It doesn't happen for sine or tangent. Let's show tangent. Find the exact value of tangent 45 and tangent of negative 45 degrees. And you'll notice they're 1 and negative 1. And so in this case, tangent and sine have a lot in common. And cosine is kind of the odd man out. We have the tangent of negative theta is equal to negative tangent of theta. And that's simply a rule. Now this also applies then for cotangent, cosecant, and secant as well. So cosine negative theta is cosine theta. That negative disappears. With sine and tangent, the negative comes out front. You know, with sine and tangent, the absolute value of the answer is always the same. It's just that you have a negative out front. Um, now, it could be that the value is actually positive, because the sine of the angle might be negative, and two negatives make it positive. But in sine and tangent, the negative comes out front. With cosine, it disappears. And it's the only magic we have in the course. All right, so point P is a is, is a point on the unit circle, and what it is, it's some angle T has the terminal side of angle T intersects the unit circle at negative four fifths, three fifths. That's B over in quadrant two. And we want to find the value of the six trigonometric functions. Now remember, wherever it intersects, wherever that point intersects the unit circle, that coordinate is in the form of cosine comma sine. So point P has a cosine of negative 4 fifths. It has a sine of 3 fifths. And then we get our reciprocals out of that. Tangent is sine divided by cosine. It turns out to be a negative 3 fourths. And the cotangent is a negative 4 thirds. When you have the intersection point between the terminal side of an angle, in this case negative 4 fifths, 3 fifths, and the unit circle, it is in the form of cosine comma sine, x comma y. Cosine x, sine y. I think you've heard me say that a few times. Uh, here's a point P on the unit circle. Find the value of the six trigonometric functions. So again, here we have the point is negative 8 seventeenths, negative 15 seventeenths. The intersection point is down in quadrant 3. It's in the form of cosine comma sine. The sine is negative 8 15 seventeenths. The cosine is negative 8 seventeenths. And then you have your reciprocals. And tangent is sine over cosine. So the negatives cancel. Well, quadrant 3, tangent should be positive. We've, we've known that for quite a while. And the cotangent is the reciprocal of 15 eighths, so it's 8 fifteenths. I'll say it again, because this is a kind of a big point. When you have the intersection point between the terminal side of an angle and the unit circle, that coordinate where they intersect, that coordinate where they intersect is in the form of cosine comma sine. Now, let P of T be a point on the unit circle. All right, so this is some angle T, and it intersects down here at negative 8 seventeenths, negative 15 seventeenths. And then we're going to ask some questions on this. Find P, the point if we add pi onto it. So here's T stretches all the way here. Now, if we add pi onto this angle, it's going to bring us back all the way to the opposite side of the angle and take us over to quadrant 1. And you'll notice that we'll have the same coordinates, 8 17 15 17 as we had down here. The only difference is they're, they're both positive because we're in quadrant 1. Let's try a different one. Let's do P of T minus pi. So 
here's from again here's t all the way to here then we're going to subtract pi well there's no difference between subtracting pi and adding pi you end up in the exact same spot now this is the one that seems to give students the biggest headache where is p of negative t well think about this p of t went all the way from here to here now let's go back to zero now instead of going positive t let's go negative t and now again we're going to stretch around this way and we'll, in this case, we'll end up in quadrant three. Yeah, we got some neat looking diagrams going on here. Again, T went from the positive X axis all the way over to quadrant three. Negative T is gonna go in the opposite direction and it's gonna go to quadrant two. And here we are, if we're in quadrant two, we have negative X and a positive Y. Something I wanna point out, P of T has a negative 8 17 for an X value. And P of T has a negative 8 17 for an X value. Yes! The x value can't change because the cosine can't change. And here's your clue of the day. P of negative t, negative t will always be above or below P of t. Guarantee, because they have to have the same cosine value. Well, what about P of t minus pi? Well, again, this was t to quadrant 3. So negative t came back to quadrant 2. Now, it doesn't make any difference whether we add pi or subtract pi. I'm subtracting pi in this problem. But whenever you add or subtract pi, you simply take it to the opposite side, which means we'll be going to quadrant 4. And we still have 8 17ths negative, and 15 17 but because we're in quadrant 4, we, we say it's positive x and negative y. Now, you got to be careful. This happened to be the example I used. We started in quadrant 3, which kind of determined that if we add or subtract pi, we end up in quadrant 1. You may get a problem that starts in quadrant 2 or quadrant 1 or quadrant 4. So again, you'll have to adjust what you've learned here for your starting point. But the big key, though, is P of negative T is above or below P of T because the cosine can't change. Therefore, X cannot change. I know, earth shattering. All right, let P be a point on the unit circle. Find the exact uh, values of the six trigonometric functions. So here we got some angle, three fourths, and we want to find the exact value of the six trigonometric functions for six fourths, or I'm sorry, three, three, three pi over four. And again, here's the angle. This is kind of like we did before, angle T. And the terminal side will intersect the unit circle. Uh, this is the 45 degree angle in quadrant two. The terminal side of the angle intersects the unit circle at negative one over square root of two, one over square root of two. Again, you need to know the sine, cosine, and tangent of 30, 45, and 60 degrees. So the terminal side of the angle intersects in quadrant two at the point negative one over square root of two, comma one over square root of two. So now we know the cosine and the sine. So the cosine is the x value, negative 1 over square root of 2. The sine is the y value, 1 over square root of 2. So here are your reciprocals. And if you take sine divided by cosine, you get negative 1, and the reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1. Well, we were in quadrant 2 with 3 pi over 4, so it makes sense that the cosine and the tangent were both negative and the sine was positive. You have to be able to count 45 degrees. Pi over 4 is 45. We started at 0, and we counted 3 of them, and that got us over to the middle of quadrant 2. All right, here's another one. And again, we're seeing this is some angle, negative pi over 6, and we want to see where the terminal side of the angle intersects the unit circle because it just gives us, it just hands us cosine sine. So this is the 30-degree angle down in quadrant 4. The terminal side of the angle intersects the unit circle at negative square root of 3 over 2, negative 1 half. And again, you have to know the sine and cosine of a 30-degree angle, pi over 6. So therefore, the cosine is right here, and the sine is right there. So the sine is negative one half because the y value of the intersection point was negative one half. The cosine is square root of three over two. You got your reciprocals. Tangent is negative one over square root of three because you divide sine by cosine. Use the formula negatives to find the exact value, and it's up to you whether you want to, you know, pull the negative out or not. You can go ahead and go find negative pi over three. You can pull the negative out and find the sine of pi over three, and then apply the negative. It, you've got choices here. So I'm going to pull the negative out of there, because that's what we were taught to do. And the sine of pi over 3, the sine of 60 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. And because there's a negative out there, hey, the answer is negative. Well, that makes sense, because negative pi over 3 is down in quadrant 4, and the sine should be negative. Again, that negative came out. Now, what about cosine negative 135? Well, what's the only magic we have in the course? The negative disappears. So the cosine of negative 135 is equal to the cosine of 135 degrees. That's the 45 degree angle over in quadrant 2. And that has a cosine of negative 
1 over square root of 2. Well, any 45 degree angle, no matter which quadrant it's in, is going to have a cosine of 1 over square root of 2. Now, if it's in quadrant 2 or 3, it'll have a negative. Now, by the way, had we looked for negative 135 degrees, we'd have been in quadrant 3, and the cosine would have been negative. Yeah, either way, you get it right. How about the tangent of negative 120 degrees? Well, I'm going to pull the negative out of there, and I want to find the tangent of the 60 degree angle in quadrant 2. 120 degrees is that 60 degree angle over in quadrant 2. And the tangent of a 60 degree angle is square root of 3. But now we're in quadrant 2 where tangent's negative. Ah, but we pulled the negative out, so we have negative negative. The answer is square root of 3. Now, had we searched for negative 120 degrees, we'd have found it over in quadrant 3, which has a positive tangent. Either way, you'll get it right. Verify the identity. Well, the trick here is a lot of students think the two negatives make it positive, which normally is true. But this negative disappears. Look at my next line. I have right here the cosine of negative x is just cosine x. Cosecant is 1 over sine. That negative comes out front. So we end up with a negative cosine over sine because this negative really isn't here. So you really only have one negative. And so the answer should be negative. And so this is how we get cosecant negative x cosine negative x equal to negative cotangent x. And a lot of students are like, hey, wait, two negatives make a positive. Well, not in this case. The only magic we have in the course. Hey, that's it for Lesson 6, Part B. Need to get to work on the homework for Lesson 6.